different tonight. I uh, figured I'd give you guys a breakdown and some knowledge about some of the the starter decks and tournament packs and stuff like that that you see. Because I, I think a lot of people actually have questions about this that weren't around back in the day to see the transformation and kind of understand where they came from and how they evolved and what they actually were. So, I figured we'd kind of break that down a little bit. So, when I started, which... I'm not sure if this is the exact one, but this may be the, the exact one. It, it, it definitely is one of them from around that same time period. This is a revised edition starter deck box. Uh, yep, <laughs> I had my deck called Yo-Yo in it. <laughs> Back then, uh, we did not have the fancy um, deck boxes like we got now with these, uh, these Ultra Pro things and all this stuff. In fact, we didn't even have sleeves, so... Literally, our deck boxes were the actual starter boxes from the game. So, we put our decks in these. No sleeves, just 60 cards, because uh, sideboards hat weren't a thing yet. Uh, in fact, some decks were only 40 cards back then. They, I don't think they started the 60-card thing until a little while after Revised came out. I could be wrong, but I don't recall it being... I remember us building 40-card decks early on, and even smaller. <laughs> One of the reasons they made a 60 card minimum because, uh, yeah, uh, channel fireball, yeah, nine card deck wins first turn every time, turn zero every time, anyway. So, <laughs> this was a revised edition, very beat up, obviously. I, it's seen some wear and tear through the years that I've had it, uh, and set in storage for quite a few years 12 years to be exact, doing nothing after being beat up for 20 years before that, but, um, anyways, well, not 20 years, but you know, you get my point. It's been around for a while. What was this, 1994, I think, or 95? 94, I think, is when uh, this set came out. So, I started the game. I got one of these and two boosters. That was pretty much what Wizards recommended you started with back then. Uh, later on, when we talk about the intro packs, that'll make some sense. Um, but, so the, uh, the concept was that you would get all your lands and stuff... Uh, a good amount of lands and stuff to get started building decks in one of these. Now, they were all five colors. They weren't any kind of, uh, you know, uh, any kind of format or scheme or color combination or anything like that. There was no, it was literally just random. It was like a few, a bunch of booster packs thrown together, basically four booster packs thrown together. But it wasn't as good as four booster packs. Um, and I'll explain why in a second, but look at that price right there. How'd you like to get a revised starter seal for $7.95 right now, huh? <laughs> Maybe pop a couple dual lands out of there for eight bucks. That'd be pretty nice. Anyways, so these uh these were what the original there is starters and there's boosters. That was it at, in the original sets. So there wasn't anything else. There wasn't a uh, theme decks or planeswalker decks, because there wasn't planeswalkers. Yeah, none of that type of stuff. Uh, these decks consisted so Alpha through revised. Uh, were 60 cards, and there was two rares in the deck. So even though it was the same amount of cards as four booster packs, you only got two rares. And you got 13 uncommons. So that was kind of a weird number because, you know, you'd think 3, 6, 9, 12. So they gave you one extra uncommon, but two less rares than if you bought, you know, four booster packs. Uh, and then they had 45... Um, commons, but you got to realize that uh, not only the the commons, but the uncommons could also be lands in these. So there was actually a large chunk of lands. You pretty much got 20 to 30 lands in one of these as well. So there was a lot of basic lands even in the uncommon slots. So even though it said 13 uncommons, you never really got 13 uncommons. You usually got, you know, between five and ten uncommons and the rest basic lands because sometimes you get a ton of basic lands in your uncommon slots which was horrible so the starter decks weren't as popular back then as the booster packs because obviously you got more quality cards in the booster packs but that's where they started that was how the game started there was a uh, these came in i think boxes of 10 originally uh, two rows of five, little brick of cards, and then uh, there was the booster boxes of uh, 36 packs, 15 cards like you see them today, in the standard sets. 
Um, the expansion sets were totally different. They were uh, 68 card packs in the original ones. Uh, 60 packs of eight cards, not 68 cards in a pack, just to clarify. So, anyways, after Revised came 4th Edition, which I have a old 4th Edition box here uh, that I dug out. This one, obviously, I didn't use as much. It's not beat up <laughs> like the other one is. Uh, so, this was a 4th Edition starter box, starter deck. Uh, you'll notice that it's quite a bit thicker. And I'll explain that a little later when I pull out some uh, rule books and show you the difference. <laughs> they changed the rules around a little bit, and the rule books were a lot bigger. So, here's your comparison to a, to a revised compared to a 4th edition starter deck. Now, the rares and everything changed around also. In the 4th edition and Ice Age starter decks, which were both the same, because they both came out the same year, uh, 95. Um, so... Both of these same 60 cards as the original ones, but they now had three rares instead of two, but they only had nine uncommons. However, you actually got all nine uncommons. They didn't swap them out with basic lands like they did in the early sets. Uh, but then you only got 26 commons and 22 lands. So they actually did give you a specific amount of lands, and they didn't just take out a bunch of cards and slap lands randomly in place of where you were hoping to get some decent playable cards in. So there's that. So these are the 4th uh, edition Ice Age series ones uh, when they were still called starter decks. Uh, and then, uh, but they don't actually say starter on them anywhere, I don't think, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah, they don't actually say starter on them anywhere. But they were just, you know, they started off as starter decks, so that's how we all knew them. See, they actually said starter pack on them in the, on the early sets, or starter deck. Uh, but these, they just, you know, everybody knew them as starter decks, so that's what we all called them. And they never, Wizards never changed it, they, all, they called them starter decks too. So, they were like that all the way up until, and you can even see here's a Mirage one. This isn't, a, this isn't an English one, this is a... Uh, the Carte del Giaco Collins. Yeah, I can't speak that language. Uh, I think it's Italian. I think this is Italian. Um, Mirage starter starter deck here. And you'll see it is still 60 cartes, or cards. Uh, so they were still the same, even in the Mirage era. They didn't change the starter decks until Urza's. Urza's Saga was the first set that had the new tournament packs that were the 75 cards. And a lot of people are curious why they say expert level on them and why the booster packs said expert level on them as well uh, in this era of, of Magic the Gathering. So, um, tournament pack, not starter deck, expert level. Uh, so I wanted to kind of go over that real quick. The reason is um, they started, so Magic was, you know, a brand new thing. It was it was the first thing, the first trading card game of its kind. Uh, nothing else like it exists be, existed before it came out. You know, obviously there's thousands of card games now, uh, but you know there was no Pokemon, there was no Yu-Gi-Oh Yu or anything like that, or Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know how to pronounce that. I, I never played it. That's I was I was already an adult when that stuff came out, so I have no idea about any of that. But anyway, uh, so there wasn't any games for the younger crowd, for the kids. So, originally, Magic the Gathering was catered more towards, you know, adults or, or, you know, 18 and up type players, or at least like 16 and up, you know, older teens that were a little more mature. Um, and it had a little more mature subject content and stuff, and a little, uh, a little more risque artwork and stuff, and, you know, you had, like, demonic this, and dark packed that, and stuff that uh, was... Actually, uh, when the game first came out, some parents thought it was like it had to do with witchcraft and it was evil and it was some kind of cult. I remember when I told my mom I was playing, she she's like, "I heard there was some kind of some kind of witchcraft cult." I'm like, "Oh my god!" So uh, <laughs> it was getting banned in schools and stuff. It was it was a big ordeal. But anyway, Wizards was getting all this backlash from the communities because of the the imagery. And uh, they also realized that, hey, kids are the biggest crop of uh, market share out there for selling products. 
So if we can get the kids into the game, we can sell a lot more product. You know, genius as far as a business ideal goes. So they started trying to cater more towards younger kids and get more younger kids in the game. So they took out everything that said demonic, all the risque artwork. They changed all the artworks around. That was the first time the artwork had changed. Um, the artworks had stayed the same on all the cards up until this, uh, which was around that fourth edition Ice Age uh, Fallen Empires era. Uh, it was between the Dark and Fallen Empires when all this stuff happened, uh, when Ice Age came out. And uh, Ice Age uh, came out a little bit before fourth edition, I believe, if I recall, if memory serves. Um, so it was right around that era. They started catering more towards the younger crowd. They took out all the very useful and important cards like like uh, Demonic Tutor, which was very important to the game, but now is considered overpowered. But it, they actually only cut it because of the name, not because of the power level. So they took out all that stuff and they tried to dumb down the game to get the kids in and release the two worst expansion sets of all time, Fallen Empires and Homelands, because they were just weak sets because they were you know, more kitty oriented. Uh, they also, uh, around this time, started developing a, a, a set to get more beginner level players interested in the game because they realized that uh, the set or the, the game was a little too complex for just average people off the street to just pick up and learn without somebody to teach them how to do it. So they, uh, they, they devised the, uh, the portal set. Uh, in 97, a couple of years after, after these sets came out, but they had already, you know, started working on it at this time. So, but they finally released it in 97. Um, and Portal was made to be a, a starter level version of the game. That's why if you see any of the old Portal cards like they have in the, oh, I don't think I have any here next to me. I should, probably should have grabbed one out of here. Um. Oh, let me see. I'll grab one real quick. Um, there's a portal card in the new set. Uh, the, the mystery boosters. Let me find it. I'll find it real fast. I swear. Give me a second. Hold that thought. That's probably an uncommon, isn't it? There it is. There's a portal card. The Brimstone Dragon. So here you go. So what they did was they, they had very simplified text on it. And then they actually had the little sword for attack and the little uh, shield for defense. <laughs> uh, and they really just kind of tried to dumb them down and make them very simple, more beginner-ish kind of, uh, kind of cards, uh, a set. And it was 215 cards in the original Portal set. But uh, that was intended just to get, you know, younger and less experienced people into the game. And it was labeled with a, a starter label. Uh, they also came out with, uh, the next year they, they came out with Portal Second Age, um, Portal 2, Portal Second Age, which is a 165 card set, very similar. Um, but it didn't have a very big print run at all. Uh, none of the portals really did because they weren't, I guess they weren't sure how they were gonna go over. And then the following year, in America they released uh, the actual starter set. This was a set that uh, just literally the 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 set emblem was a star. <laughs> it was just a, a little outline of a star. And that was their starter set. And it was just like Portal. It had very simplified text on it. No flavor text or anything. Just very simplified cards for basic beginners to kind of get into the game and start playing. And uh, that is what these are from here. These are, I believe, from an original starter deck, uh, which came in a box that looks very much like this. That's why I got this uh, sixth edition box out here. They came uh, packaged in a box like this, a larger box, two decks in the box, and then a very large, which I'll show you the sixth edition one here, a very large play guide. <laughs> large and in charge with uh, easy to kind of understand, large text for simple-minded and, uh, you know, pictures and stuff like that. And this is how you tap a card. And, you know, stuff like that. Very simple kind of breakdowns of how to get started. So, that's where, uh, that's where the, the actual starter 
level kind of icon thing came from star level and then they had the corsets at the time which at the time was fifth and sixth edition i believe was advanced level the more the advanced players <laughs> but it was still more in the middle. It was the expansion sets were for the expert level. So there you have it. There's what those, that's why so many of these say expert level on them because they actually considered the core sets as the advanced level. And then they had all these starter sets as their starter level. So there's where the three levels come from. If you hadn't seen those before, some people actually haven't. So if you've already seen them and you're like, duh, we already know this. Just keep in mind, a lot of the audience doesn't know this. They weren't around at the time. So they had no idea that there was actually three levels of, of play back then. And the cards kind of corresponded to that. The advanced were all, the starter and advanced at the time were white bordered. The portals were black bordered. Uh, the, well, the foreign portals were black bordered. The American portals were white bordered, I believe, on the first one. I think portal two was all black border, if I correct. I don't know, it's been a long time since I saw these. Portal 3 Kingdoms, however, also came out in 1999. Portal 3 Kingdoms was another one of those wizards is like, hey, you know, these kids, you know, bringing all these kids into the game really increased our sales. Where's their next biggest chunk of uh, population we can get a lot of sales from? Asia. There we go. Asia. We'll get the Asian people into it. So Portal 3 Kingdoms is actually based on a, a, an old... Uh, uh, Japanese, I believe, fable, um, or probably not fable, it's probably part of their history of some uh, three kingdoms that were fighting for dominance, or I don't know the whole story behind it, I remember reading about it back when the set came out, but it wasn't really very access accessible in the U.S., it was really mainly, they, they really pushed that one out overseas, and they, start, they did the starter set in America for the beginners. So the Portal 3 Kingdoms was more to get uh, Asian beginners into the game. Uh, they did release it in English, but there is, I, I saw a lot more Chinese and Japanese versions than I ever saw English versions. I, I've almost never seen Portal 3 Kingdoms English versions, and I've been, you know, I was playing throughout that whole era, and, you know, we never saw them. I mean, we saw once in a great while, but most of the time it was the Chinese or the Japanese ones that actually got over here that we saw. So... It was kind of kind of weird setup how they did that. I think they did a lot more of the foreign ones than they did the English ones because I didn't think they, they thought it would go over very well in America um, because it was all more Asian ideology and, and, and mythology related. Um, so then uh, the following year that they did another starter in the U.S., uh, Starter 2000, uh, year 2000 um so so they did another starter here um and then uh like i said in urza's saga all the way up to sarge of alara they did the tournament packs the 75 card tournament packs these are different than the starters because they're not starter level <laughs> they're not uh they were intended to be a beginner's pack really the same way. I mean, it was, but it kind of wasn't. Um, these were a little bit different setup. There were 75 cards with three rares, 10 uncommons, 32 commons, and then 30 lands. So there were how you, th these were the only way you could actually get basic lands uh, through that kind of period there because uh, you could only get basic lands in the advanced and starter series kind of decks. So you, you didn't get any basic lands in the expansion packs, in the booster packs. Uh, so they started putting these out, or they, they put these out for all those sets so you could get basic lands and not have to buy beginner level cards if you weren't a beginner, but you needed lands to play. So that's basically, I think, the idea behind the tournament packs uh, to get you ready for tournaments, man. So you could get your basic lands, basically. Um, so... Like I said, they did those from Urza Saga to Shards of Alara. Now, there was foils in these, and they were just kind of random. Uh, some would have foils, some wouldn't have foils. I think they say the odds were, yeah, one in a hundred cards for the foils. 
So every other starter deck technically should have had a foil in it, but you know, it's rare that I've seen people open one of these and not get at least one foil. Uh, you usually get a common foil or a, or a foil uh, planes or something out of them. Um, once in a while you will get a good hit foil out of them, but it's kind of rare because they were one in a hundred cards back then. Foils were not easy to get back in those days. Uh, they're not like now where you get a foil in pretty much every pack or every other pack. Back then, foils were not easy to get. Um, now, some people felt that they got better cards in the starter decks and tournament packs than they did in the booster packs. I was one of those believers in the early days. I think I pulled way more dual lands out of starter decks than I did out of regular booster packs. Um, which is kind of weird because there's, there was only two rares in these in the revised days. But I think I got quite a few dual lands out of starter decks. Uh, so it was probably just a kind of coincidence type thing that, you know, we all kind of blew out of proportion. But, you know, that that kind of belief is still going on. People still believe that uh, you get better cards in bundles or you get better cards in deck builders toolkit packs or you get better cards in the packs that are in the Planeswalker decks than you do in the actual regular booster boxes. So it's, it's kind of funny how... <laughs> As much as things change, they still stay the same. So um, after they, you know, it's changed it to the tournament packs, they also kind of came up with the idea for doing the uh, the theme decks where they actually had a pre-con deck. Like this was Rat's Nest from Betrayers of Kamigawa, which uh, the reason I, I chose this box to bring out here is because it relates to that Portal 3 Kingdoms thing. This is kind of the return of that Portal 3 Kingdoms made for Americans. <laughs> so uh, it was that Asian kind of oriental historical kind of uh, mythology, ninjas and samurai type uh, battling for domination of the plane type concept that they had in Portal 3 Kingdoms, but not more, more geared towards American fantasy world instead of uh, the actual more historically based you know, mentioning actual historical figures and stuff like they did in Portal Three Kingdoms to try and bring in the more the more of the Asian market there. So kind of funny. I just thought I just I really like this block. I thought it was really creative. I thought it was cool ideas in there, um, and I'm glad they did that block. And I was playing real heavily during the the uh, Kamigawa block. There was uh, the original one was Champions of Kamigawa. This was the second one, Betrayers of Kamigawa, and then the final one was Saviors of Kamigawa. Now the uh, the three block set was so much more focused and fluent than this random chaos that they're doing now. I really like the three block set. The reason they stopped doing it, in my opinion, is because. They always had trouble with the third set in the block, in each block. The third set was always the smallest set, and it was always the weakest set, because they were running out of ideas by the time they got to the third set every time. That's not our problem. Come up with better ideas. Hire some more writers. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Uh, stop making such small sets for the third set. You know, make the make the middle set the small set and see how that works. I don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, They don't have any small sets anymore, like... Back in these days, like a 200-card set was a big expansion set. Because, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of the expansion sets average, you know, 100 to 150 cards. Uh, you know, I mean, some of the greatest sets of all time, you know, Antiquities and Arabian Nights were less than 100 cards. So, you know, uh, I think they just, I, I don't know. I don't know why they stopped doing the three-block set. I liked it. I thought it was great. But anyways, uh, this was... I thought this was a great idea, the pre-con decks, actually, because they put a deck together that beginners could actually just buy for, like, eight bucks, I think they were, eight or nine bucks, ten bucks, maybe, and they could actually open it up and just start playing games. So, I really like that concept. I thought it was a great idea. Uh, they eventually went with just that, for the most part. They got rid of the tournament packs and they after Shards of Alara they switched over to the intro packs which we all know are the uh the pre-con deck and then they come with two extra booster packs I thought that was a great idea I think their execution of it was terrible because they just put really cheap cards in them they didn't put anything really good in them 
Um, so the values didn't hold up on those. I mean, you can buy those uh, intro packs. I buy them all the time for like, you know, six, seven, eight bucks, you know. They're not very expensive, and uh, you're basically just paying for the, the two packs in there. <laughs> you know, you're not even paying for the deck because the deck's terrible. I've opened a bunch of them on my channel. If you want to go back and look at some of those, they're in the uh, the pre-con decks playlist. So, anyways, I wanted to give you guys a uh, kind of hi little history behind all this and uh, show you kind of the evolution of the, the starter decks through to the tournament packs, through to the intro decks and the pre-cons and uh, show you where the starter, advanced, and expert level kind of icons came from. And I know a lot of people haven't even seen the starter or advanced level because they haven't done those in many, many years. Uh, and, you know, most people really, there's not a lot of seal to that stuff left, you know. Uh, the expert level stuff was made in a lot higher print runs, so a lot more of that stuff out there than there was the starter or advanced stuff. So, anyways... Uh, just for future reference, I did pick up an Onslaught Expert Level Tournament Pack. Oh, can't see that. There we go. Tournament Pack. I got that in the mail today. So I'll be opening that in a video here in the next few days. So watch out for that because this is the OG Fetchlands. That's right. This is where the Fetchlands originally came from. Um, and like I said with the revised starter packs, I had really good luck pulling the Fetchlands out of these tournament packs. So, is there a fetch in here? Is there a foil fetch in here? This was not cheap. This was a $55 I think I paid for it after shipping and all that. So, hopefully there's a fetch land in here. Because if there's not, I really overpaid for a bunch of Onslaught cards. So, anyways. Um, so, look for that. Real quick before I let you guys go. If you're still sticking with me. Got a little special surprise here for you. This is just a box of stuff that I came across it's literally all old instruction books this is a these were what the alpha beta unlimited and revised instruction books were these were i think most of these are revised but they're some of them may have been from beta or alpha starter decks because i did open some of the alpha and beta stuff when i was younger uh when i first started playing the game as you can see i remember from the the classic 6th edition one here where we had full color and fancy art and all this. Here's the OG stuff. It's like, you got untapped and tapped. <laughs> anyway, you got your library and your graveyard. So, and here's your, here's your original game turns. Things have changed a lot. The phases are nothing like they used to be. Um, so... There, well, there wasn't a second main phase originally. There was only one main phase. Um, there is a untap, upkeep, draw a card. Number four is your main phase, which in any order you may put a land into play, make an attack, or cast spells. In any order. So you could, you could do those three things on your main phase, but you could do them whatever order you wanted. So it was either you could attack first and then you'd have your main phase, or you could have your main phase and then attack. And then you discard it down to seven cards and then inform opponent you are finished and then heal your creatures. So there's the original game turns. Also, the stack worked totally different back then. Fast effects didn't all happen at the same speed. We had instants, interrupts, sorceries. Everything all happened at different speeds. So here's the anatomy of a card with, a, with an original alpha craw giant or craw worm in there. So... <laughs> A very poor printing of it. Uh, they didn't have a lot of money back then. This was back when it was still a... Uh, it was Wizards of the Coast, but it was Garfield Games, basically. Richard Garfield was basically doing most of it by himself. So, there's some old, uh, like I said, revised Alpha and Beta. I don't know which one's which or if any of them are actually... Oh, yeah, I think there is a little different printing. So, I think at least one of them's a Beta, at least. And then this stack here was the new Magic the Gathering rules specific to Legends cards. These were in all the Legends packs. As you can see, I opened a lot of Legends packs because that was the first expansion set when I started playing. And for some reason, I just ended up holding on to all the rules cards from all the packs that I opened. So, 
I don't know. I'm kind of curious. You curious? You got a second? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Remember, I was a poor kid. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So I opened almost an entire box of Legends when it came out. So 32 packs. <laughs> so... Uh, Legends, I think, was the first expansion set with 36 packs of 15 cards. Uh, because Arabian Nights and Antiquities were both, I believe, 60 packs of 8 cards. So, there you go. I opened almost the entire Legends box when I was a poor kid. Of course, they were only like $2.45, I think, when they came out. They were pretty cheap. But they did sell out really fast, so I was lucky to get that many. Uh, a couple of Ice Age books, as you can see, between... Revised and Ice Age. Things got a little bit a uh, little bit more ramped up. The book's about twice as thick. And it had a color cover. It was amazing. There's actually some some art in this one a little bit. There's actually some some actual cards shown in play. Uh, and these these books were kind of funny if you read the old ones. They tried to make them a little bit humorous. And there's a they walk you through a sample game with two different players. It's it's they're kind of funny. If you get a chance to pick up one of these old books, take a look at it and read through it. There's an old Exodus one that I think got kind of humidity damage or something. I'm in Florida, so humidity is pretty rampant down here. Anyways, I figure you guys would like to take a look at some of that stuff, and hopefully some of that knowledge helps some of you guys that were curious about some of those things. And if you got any questions about that stuff, uh, hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'm always glad to answer any questions about... The old days, the good old days when I started playing. So, all right, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Hopefully, you got something useful out of this and learned something. And feel free to hit me up in the comments and we'll chat a little bit more about it. You guys, uh, hopefully, we'll see you in the next video. There's probably some suggestions in the corner. Hope everybody's uh, staying safe and having fun out there when you're locked in your houses and <laughs> trying to go too stir crazy. You guys have a great night and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.